Hey, hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary Greek's Peace, Warned East. This is a special bonus episode brought to you by my Patreon supporter, Tomislav Schlin. And if you would like to see additional content as well, head down to patreon.com, see which level of support suits you. And, uh, yeah, let's uh, continue with the game. We're right in the onset of the uh, nasty winter offensives. There's only the Soviet partisans here. So, as for... Air, we now have to deal with blizzards in almost all of the regions. So I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out all of my planes for the moment uh, over the, the winter period and to get them back once the weather gets a little bit better. Um, because things are already bad enough in that regard as it is. So we have. Uh, no planes, except this, I guess. Some transports. Send them to the reserve. Just like you. And all of these, so they won't be sucking up any... Or that many supplies anymore. I actually don't know how much fuel they use if you send them over to the reserve and how much fuel they use in the reserve itself. Ideally, if they would stop using fuel if they don't train, I might even consider stopping them from training altogether because that uses fuel that I need for other stuff. Uh, but yeah we'll uh we'll go over that in a little bit either way all the air fleets are are gone so let's execute those air directors and um once that's done, the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, change Paul Laux as commander of the Third Panzer Army because he has no business being there. Um, I really don't know how it, this guy got there. Um, Paul Laux, there we are. That's 26, we're at 29, so it's always 27, because it's always 26 plus, one, plus the admin cost of deploying a certain unit. Um, let's see. Obviously, we'd want something, someone decent. Um, for the Knobbelsdorf, is pretty good. He has... Overall, except for A, and A is admin. Uh, admin is somewhat more important here. So, Carl Hollett is also good. It's pretty reasonable. He doesn't have seven in... Um, in this case, it was mech, yeah. Otto Deslok is also an air general. He has seven in air. Why would he be under a regular core? It's beyond me. That's a th 34th. I'm gonna take a look, but I'm gonna get uh, Otto Knobelsdorf here. Um, sorry. Uh, I'd rather have uh, hold it. And um, yeah, let's let's check out the 34th. Fourth core. I'm quite sure it's a core that I don't use. Right. Um. Gonna put you in Smolensk and keep them there, or in Vyazma and keep them there. And we have the other one here. It doesn't really seem to have all that much effect. Do I have to do something for this? I don't think so. Hmm. 
Now, the one uh, down here, I actually want to get it over to Kursk and make Kursk get to a, a super depot. But um, we'll get to that uh, eventually. Let's just go over the stats here first, right before the onset of winter. So, currently we have around, uh, in total, like with the reserve forces, we have around... 2,850,000, which is around 300,000 less than the Soviets due to the mud turns, etc. 3,100 pieces of uh, artillery, etc. So guns, and then the only thing that we have more is tanks. We have no airfield uh, air units currently. Um, if we look at the losses, the Soviets are close to 4 million clo uh, with our five point, uh, or 576,000, slightly more that is. Victory points still at 700, initiative the same, high watermark the same, so victory points is the same. Total men stagnant for both apparently during this turn. Pretty much, I mean 4,000 barely counts. Um, total guns slightly going up for the Soviets. Tanks going down. Or it's going up for us. It's okay. Airplanes stagnant. Manpower losses. We are all poor, poor, poor. The thing that really concerns me, though, is this. The fuel stores. I, um... You know, it, during the first game, fuel was not a thing. And, uh... Yeah, at this point, uh, I am actually a little bit worried about that, interestingly enough. At any rate, um, let's start by taking a look in the south here. We have the 11th Army. They have a. I did designate them a Werfer Battalion. Gotta take a look where I can distribute that. So, preferably at the 11th. Yeah, exactly. Alright, let's give those to the 11th. Um, Probably doing all the, the reorganization um, during this actual game here. Um, we have the third motorized there, kind of okay here. Yeah, that's fine. We have those guys up there, so everything you guys are slightly overburdened so i'm not too happy about that let's put these guys under the 30th law and then i want you under the 54th so they're now still overburdened but at least they have their units uh, right next to them Let's actually see, because I can probably change that. The way I would need to do it is as follows. If I put the 4th Mountain Division under the 3rd Motorized Corps, which seems a little bit odd, but... Uh, do I not... Yeah, I'll just have uh, those, okay. Let's see, I would like to keep this comet value above 5, but uh, I want to take a look which units I can... Uh, yeah, so the 227th Stuck battery, I can let go for the moment while keeping them at 5. If I put you under the 3rd motorized core... That will allow these to have only 6 out of 9. So you can be put under the 11th. And that means problem solved. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I really don't like those there if I can let's have the 60th motorized I 
I know they are in not the greatest of shapes. But um it does add quite a few men. I'll put all of them under the first panzer group. Um uh, yeah, let's actually just do this quickly. Because the AI is going to attack there again. And it's going to be trouble. Things are slightly less bad potentially there. Although I also don't really like the way that looks. Let's give these guys some support units if we can. Yeah, we can. Let's start with a Panzerjäger Battalion. Uh, Stuck Battalion. And a pioneer battalion to beef them up. That gets them to f five, apparently. And at least the 10,000 men, which uh, I'm happy about. Now, the enemy does not seem to be going to attack over at this location. So, potentially, I could leave the 100th Light Division. And... Um, ah... The problem is, is that here they're only at level 1 fortifications and here they're at level 2. But they have more damaged rifle squads. And the question is, which of those places am I going to reinforce, basically? Mm, they did attack the Italians, but they did hold their own quite well. At least because the river has not frozen yet at all in that location. Um, I could potentially send Leibstandard and the Großdeutschland Motorized Regiment to support the Italians, which is probably a good idea. Although, the one unfortunate thing at that point is that they would have to get on the rail. Well, the... Um, the thing is, this is also a real bottleneck. If they break through here, then I would immediately be in trouble in the Donbass. So, if... I don't want the Italians to fall, basically. Um, and they do already have all the support units. I don't think I have any really additional support units that I can put on them. Um... How are you... Yeah, you know, I, I could give them some flack, so that's not... Um, let's see. Yeah, you guys cannot even get out. What if I just move you? They would be able to get there. They're probably going to go down to one at that point. Two, okay. Well, let's get the Coast Deutschland Motorized Regiment under the... First Panzer Group. Just like Leibstand there. Uh, that doesn't put them under a core. Alright, so these guys are a bit beefed up now. I would have liked doing it the other way around, but this it, it's at least something. And now that they have these German units out there, they should be somewhat reinforced. Although, they'll probably still not do very amazingly in terms of supplies for now. Um, talking about uh, supplies, uh, the rail line, we're working pretty hard on it, especially in this area. Um, uh, we're still getting it from only one rail line, which is unfortunate. Um... Are they working on that? Uh. Hmm. Oh, they might have repaired it, but it's not actually linked to anything. That could be... I believe they're yellow at that point. Like these two hexes, they might be repaired, but then... 
They're not actually linked. And the same here, they're actually connected to the Soviets. And the problem is that I believe any rail which is directly adjacent to an enemy unit, it does not actually work. Which would suggest that the supply dump on that hex doesn't work properly because we need to get rails in there. Although it does kind of act as if it is railing up here because it, it takes those in use. Weird. Hmm. At any way, let's. Uh, you guys have two flak units to distribute. Um, these guys have a lot of flak, and these guys also have a lot of flak. So maybe it's not so necessary for you guys. But it does seem like these don't have any flak. So the eleventh core. So maybe I can still send it to the 11th core here. Yes, I can. Perfect. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll have some flag from these guys, which I probably cannot send to the 11th core. I'll send it up to the 11th army to redistribute. Three, because these guys have seven and you have also seven so um, if uh, I send two from you and one from the other they both have six and uh, the 11th army will be a little bit better distributed okay um, I actually think I need to get this motorized core out of there well it doesn't really seem like they're getting any supplies and they're not really doing anything um i should be able to keep you a reserve in belgorod because belgorod is a city hex and uh, all right let's keep these guys on the reserve out here there's pretty much nothing i want to do with this except Nah, I'm I'm quite good, I think. Uh, I want to keep Viking on there too to build that fort level, even though they probably suffered already some attrition damage. Yes, they did. Um, let's beef up the 131st with some additional support units as well. Um, that probably, this probably gnaws at the other units, but, uh, uh, like the fact that they're also at fort level zero is, uh, pretty bad. If I send out the tanks to plug the line. <sighs> yeah, I think as it is currently, let's send one part over there to help digging in. Um, and at eight strength, they're doing a lot better than otherwise. So that these two parts can at least stay in there without uh, too much trouble. Um, we're still working on the rail lines just fine. I actually, uh, I guess the range is 15. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So then they're probably going to work on this down here then. 
I actually kind of want them to work towards Mariupol as well. They're kind of not doing that. Mm. Though I wonder... Let's see, what is your admin? Four only. Yeah. Um, because... I mean, there's a lot of rail to be covered around Kharkov, so... It might be more prudent to start sending them to Kharkov. Or just under the Army Group South, as it is. But Army Group South has a range of uh, 45, I believe. Or what is it? That's... Uh, yeah, 45. So that's a lot more. That will allow them to start building up all the way to Orel. Um, so that's also not necessarily something that I want. Hmm. Tricky. What is also tricky is that I'm gonna actually send the super heavy howitzers to the these armies two to the seventeenth, one to the eleventh. Um, for redistribution on the next turn. These are all fine. I mean, they're, they're not actually fine, but, uh. Ain't much else I can do for them here. Um, 126. Let's see if uh, you already have the marine flak. Yeah, I cannot assign anything extra. Here neither. What about you? Alright, I can get some flak. As much as it's worth. It's worth something, apparently. Anyway, I... Um, should have been putting you not under the 18th, but under the 16th army. And... Moreover... If uh, they can't reach it. Huh. Why, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Do I 
No, I only have a mixed flak battalion. That's not going to help. Well, like I said, I do totally expect a retreat there. So it would not surprise me if uh, if I will. Fourth Panzer Group. You've divided everything or most things. All right. Now, uh, let's do this. Make you part of the 24th. Which I'll have to reorganize because they're now at 10. Uh, this is the 38th. There we go. Eight, nine. You're not overburdened, right? You're not, indeed. Um. Hmm. So I have two divisions here that I think actually I should be sending out. And I will be sending them Over to Orel, I think. Or down here. Um, mm, no. Because there's just no real getting up there. Even if I do send them to Rajev, it's going to take them two additional turns in order to even get get up to this line. It, it, do, it doesn't help. So... If I send them over here, they can reinforce this line. All right, let's send one over to Kaluga. I actually want to have the best reinforcements in there. And I want the 254th Infantry Division to go over to Smivka to reinforce this here line over there and um, what I will do well I already have you guys just on, on refit here they have a lot of supplies etc because they're on the actual depot I'll get the 18th army and move it. Oh, no, I wanted to just use regular movement. All right. To do that. Okay, now. I have some additional forces, 25th, 10th, and uh, both motorized and thus Reich. The, um, I want 
the 25th and the 10th. Let's actually take a look where they went historically. So for the 25th, the 25th Motorized Division was sent to the Russian front in June 1941 and served in the central sector for the next three years. It fought in the second passage of battle of Shithmir, Yuman, Kiev, Bryansk, and Tula, south of Moscow. It spent January 1942-43 in the Bryansk rural sector, took heavy casualties in Kursk and fought at Smolensk in October 1943. Meanwhile, June 23rd, 1943, it was redesignated the 25th Panzer Grenadier Division from November 1943 to June 1944 to help part of the 4th Fourth Army sector near Orsha, and then several nights forty-four, the twenty-fifth Panzer Grenadier suffered heavy losses in the circumvent of east of Minsk. These the parts of the division which escaped were assigned to the one hundred seventh Panzer Brigade. And for the tenth, tenth motorized division invaded Russia with Army Group Center on June twenty-second, nineteen forty-one. The division crossed the Bug and fought at Bobrusk, Smolensk, the Dnieper crossings, Gomo, Kiev, Bryansk, and Tula. And then the Battle of Moscow, another important battle since 1941, suffering heavy casualties in the process. After the Soviet winter offensive, 1941-42 was halted. The 10th Motorized remained on the center of sector during the defensive actions of 1942, mainly at Mozhaisk, Zhuknov, and Spasdemyansk, and took part in the unsuccessful Kursk Offensive in July 1943. It was officially redesignated 10th Panzer Grenadier Division on June 13, 1943, and received the 7th Panzer Battalion in October. Sent to the southern sector, the 10th suffered heavy losses in the Battle of Kiev in the fall of 1943, it also fought at Kremenchuk and then defeated uh, the retreat to the Dnieper. By January 1944, it had only 3,700 men and was defending 10 miles of frontage. It retreated through the Ukraine and suffered heavy losses in the Bessarabia debacle in August 1944. That it had to be withdrawn for, the, for rest and reorganization. Later that year, it returned to the Eastern Front. Now, however, only at battle group strength and had only three Panzer Grenadiers. A Panzer Grenadier and one motorized artillery battalion remaining. In 1944 and early 1945, it fought at Krakow, Radom, and a retreat from the Vistula at Gurlitz and Silesia. By now, however, the tanks of the 7th Panzer Battalion had been lost and had been replaced by assault guns. The 41st Panzer Grenadier Regiment had apparently been disbanded, and the 10th Panzer Artillery Regiment had only one battalion left. The division, however, continued to resist. It was forced to retreat into Moravia in April, and the remnants of the 10th Panzer Grenadier Division surrendered to the Soviets at Deutsche Brot on May 10th, 1945. Funny that Das Reich actually has no uh, wiki then. Um, right, for the moment, I want to send both of these into Smolensk. And yeah, I'm going to send Das Reich over the dreaded rail line over into Dnipropetrovsk, which is, of course, also going to be a disaster. Let's take a look at the reserve here. We have these panzers still uh, working. I did put all of them on refit, but um, that stuff takes a while. We do have the Flanders SS Infantry Battalion. Which uh, we can now transfer to the map because they're also at 100%. And I'll leave these Romanians. Let's actually take a look at the Balkans because I do believe I can send the Romanians to the Balkans as well. Well, if I leave only Italians here, that will potentially allow me to send some of these guys um, away. So we're currently at 100%, but in Italy, we're at 122 so I should probably send some Italians over there. Um, let's see. The Bari in Italian Infantry Division. So if I transfer these to the Balkans, I can. We're still at 120. So if I also send the Calabria to the Balkans. Let's uh, see how that affects us. That is 118. Because currently we have only Italian units in Italy, which is just fine. But then if I can get more here. So 119 is 100%. And this Panzer Battalion is 1.66, for example. And the 164th Infantry Division is 6.36 so they actually take up a significant portion of the units which are in in the Balkans at this point now the static units and divisions can stay there yeah they are 8,000 men but it's less serious than anything else so 
before Italy. What is their most powerful unit? The Centaur Armored Division. Where's Frozen? All of these regular infantry divisions only amount to just one point. Um, except for the uh, Alpine divisions, but I want to send the Alpine divisions to the Caucasus in, uh, in 1942. Uh, so that's a bit of a thing. Let's send La Spezia over to the Balkans too. Effectively, we have around four. So I'm looking for a replacement at the very least for the 164th Infantry Division. So I would need to send at least two more Italian Infantry Divisions over there. Um, yeah, because otherwise we are not going to make it. Um, to the Balkans and now we have the Fulgore. Uh let's actually take a look at, at uh, the status here we're at 110 yeah so if I send one more they'll be fine That's, uh, so we're at 107 that should be fine. Whereas uh, in two turns, then we can send them from the Balkans. Um, yeah, then in two turns, we'll have at least... Um, we'll have released the 164th Infantry Division and potentially the 716th Heavy Cannon Battalion as well. So we have some additional artillery uh, on the front line. Western Europe is 108, which would suggest that I could send some uh, forces over to the Eastern Front. Uh, I would probably send mountain divisions, but I will have to see. There's no need to do it now. Um, the good thing, of course, is that in uh, the Western Europe, the weather is good. So it means that any units that I can s um, spare, I will not have them here in um, I don't know how the winter attrition uh, is dealt with in the theater boxes. Actually, oh, you have one T-34. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Yeah, let, let's zoom out. Oh, I can't. Okay. Uh, at some point, moving the map at this range is taking exceedingly slow. All right, let's uh, ship it back to the Soviets then and uh, see what this first nasty turn will give us. It uh, shouldn't... Well, we'll see. Should have zoomed in. Okay, zoom in. Come on, guys. I messed up. <laughs> I really messed up here. Uh, no. Please. Might be lucky if I can get zoom in through the air face. I'm definitely trying. Hmm. Think about something that I might have been able to do. I don't know. We'll just have to weather weather the storm for now. Zoom in, please. Nope. The moment I click two, the game will get completely stuck. So I wonder how it comes to be that it just it takes so much processing power or something from the from the computer. Or maybe it just keeps uh, keeps taking and uh, keeps taking uh, just to to run through the turn faster. Might be like that.
Yeah, the Soviets have decided that they're also no longer going to run, as I predicted. Which is why I said my unit's away, of course. Hmm. I'm still awfully weak in plenty of places, especially like here. Really don't like that. Really don't like that. But the river hasn't frozen here yet. Mm. Nope. So, so I might have to actually, over the course of the winter, I have to retreat there too. We also have very little supplies in general, so that might also be why we cannot inflict such severe losses upon the Soviets, simply because we don't have the guns. Hmm. And then in places where we do have it, like for example, yeah, they're minus 16 already there. Uh, places like here, you know, we are able to inflict loss upon them. Dude, you're just never gonna break through for now. So I don't know what the, uh boy. hold okay. I'm still super weak around here. many of these we get but uh, 2-8 huh I'm uh, shaking in my boots It's a partially frozen river here. Zero losses, huh? Wow. If they gotta continue attacking here, this is definitely a, a, a point where I will have to try and get reinforcements. It's a lot easier for the Panzers, at least it seems like, to hold that riverbank. Oh, crud. Whew. Wow, they did a tremendous job as well. While the river is uh, still okay. <laughs> that's, that's basically the thing. You know, now that the river is still marginally uh, good, they cannot attack a second time. But I went to zero again. Oh man. You can really immediately see it in these numbers. Pfft. 
threat at Corral. So I need to send something there, at least for this unit. And if they're shuffling, I'd hope it'd be done. But at least I'd reinforce these with the that part of the second panzer group, which was absolutely necessary. It's a good thing I did. Please, sir. Okay, good. This is also a terrible, terrible part in the line. It's the only area where there's no actual river. Go, Hungarians, go! Minus 50%. Whatever, mate. Mm hmm. Yes. Okay. Nope. Man, this uh, turn is taking pretty long. And they didn't even get their half a million troops yet. Oh, boy. All right. I did get them some Germans. Oh, it's also minus 50% there. The supplies here are abysmal at best. No, 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 no. Exactly, you wanna hold. Range is still 625. That's a reasonable indication. Ay caramba. Good. Putting some additional reinforcements in there certainly did pay off for now. And support units don't suffer winter attrition at least either. It's still like four and eight defense, despite the fact that I put that motorized unit there, which was, of course, still super weak. This is, of course, the part of least concern. It's like the absolute middle of nowhere. Um... But one of the interesting things that I found is that actually many of these places, they have level 2 fortifications. It's so weird. Uh, that was it. Alright. First turn survived. Huh. Alright. Well... 25 more to go. <laughs> 25 more to go. Uh, the, um, I mean, if I'm going to do one episode a turn like this, it, uh, this winter might take a while. I mean, even now I've been busy for an hour, so it's not as if, you know, I just had a five, five minute video and that was it. Oh, well, oh. That's, uh... Let's take a look at the new turn, November 30th. So we're starting to get into December. When the real Soviet offensive started. They might actually get their half a million men this turn. 
which would uh, likely entice a significant increase in Soviet aggression. Ooh, a level three fortification. Jolly. <laughs> yeah. I've been trying to get my units into static mode, but uh, so far I haven't had any success yet. I'll see. Maybe it will show it once uh, we're at level three there. I will, of course, deal with that on the next episode then. I know that my units at this stage are not very likely to do any real digging process. Also, given the fact that the Soviets are constantly attacking them, probably knocking them down in that regard. Oh, it's only minus 35,000. Yeah, that's not too bad. Here we go. Excess garrison in the Transcaucasus RAF raids. We've already read this. Uh, Soviets release reserves. As Soviet forces mobilized in the fall of 1941, Stav Stavka insisted on keeping large reserves in anticipation of a winter counteroffensive. Although some reserves were re released in late November, some did not arrive to front until December. 500,000 men added to Soviet manpower pool. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so they, they did arrive. Um... They're not shown up yet in the numbers here. So they might only add to those reserve forces. Well, we'll see. We might not be able... Let's take a look here. Because it's not... It's a manpower pool. Yeah, so the manpower pool for the Soviets was... Like 90,000. <laughs> but we also have like a manpower pool of a million. That's a lot. It's like... All these men just waiting to get to the front line. And just, they just can't. Because of the rail. Thank God they got some supplies. I guess uh, in a way this uh, rail forward rail unit is somewhat doing its job now. It's also completely emptied. Oh, it's on the... Oh my God. It's on the wrong hex now because I switched it. Uh, I'm a bloody idiot. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. At any rate. Uh, that was uh, yet another turn. I will uh, go over everything from start to finish in the next one. Uh, losses also for the Soviets didn't change that much because they didn't attack that much, for example. So, uh, yeah, that that's just the unfortunate truth of it. Like they also didn't even attack all that much. So, there is that. All right, uh, did they just make a level three? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to wrap things up. I want to thank you all for watching. Do hope you enjoyed it. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Poomnarao, Dungeon Pastor, C Data, Swords, Mandingo, Thomas Lachlan, and Pooch. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.